So this is the Elegoo satellite um, slicing software um, for the Elegoo printer series. Uh, I have a Saturn IV Ultra printer. And we're just going to drop in the same file that we used for the demo for Bamboo Studio. So I'm just going to drop in, drag and drop the dripping um, figure. And like it did with Bamboo Studio, um, this um, software satellite is going to detect that there's a unit issue and we'll just go yes and it will drop our part in. So there's our file and you'll note that there's no warning in here about um, how many triangles we have um, because SLA prints have millions, up to millions of uh, triangles because they're capturing a lot of uh, detailed resolution, textured resolution uh, on a model that you just can't capture with an FDM or a FFF uh, printer. This is a DLP printer and we'll go through um, how we use this software to set up our jobs. So just like the bamboo, um, we can move, rotate, scale uh, and mirror and also array, layout and measure our model. So here what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rotate this model and I'm going to rotate it up uh, just 90, 90 degrees. Now the trick with um, this type of printing, resin liquid printing uh, a model, is that in reality what it's doing is it's printing it upside down. So it's actually printing it this way, and it will print up layer upon layer. It'll, it'll print up the model out of the vat of resin um, below. So here we can see that we can run our slice file down and look at our model. Um, and what we really need to do, this model we could print this way, um, and we could do a contrast between the FDM and this one. But typically with, a, with this kind of print, we're trying to reduce our cross-sectional axis and also reduce putting the um, support structure on the detailed areas of our model. So probably what we want to do is just lay the model back a little bit and then also just lay the model over like this on an angle. And this really helps with um, setting up the model for printing and helps with layer lines. Um, we need to think of layer lines. And in this printer, what it's doing at the moment is it's set up for 50 micron um, layer heights. So that is 0 0.05 millimeters. So it is the default resolution of the resin printer is half that of the finest resolution that the bamboo printer can print. And this printer can print 20 microns if you want um, without a problem. So what we're going to do is we've brought our model in and we've rotated it and we can apply it and then just close this. What we do here is we look at the top. So this model we might want to hollow it out um, because with the resin this is a very thick cross section here, so we might want to have, you know, reduce the cross section down a lot. So if we click hollow, we've got a wall thickness of two millimeters. The precision on the wall thickness is two mil. The hollowing is an inward hollow. Um, I'm going to turn the filling method off for now. And if I could confirm, what we'll see here is we'll hollow the part out and it'll show us a wall thickness. So here is the now the internal wall and the external wall two millimeter thickness. Now that slice has got a lot less um, force to release off the bottom of the transparent window that the UV light comes through in order to set the resin. This is going to release a lot easier. Now the problem with resin printing is that when we print our model upside down like this and we have our slice layer, we get a phenomenon called cupping. And cupping basically means that there's a whole load of resin up in here and the resin 
creates a suction, like a suction cup, hence I think the term cupping, and it can pull your model off. So you need to be able to reduce the force on the cupping, and the way to do that is to put a hole in the top of the print. And typically you just put a hole in the shoe here, and that will reduce the cupping force because it will allow air to flow into the hole, and then the resin will drop down and only be in the area that the bed is full with resin. So there'll be this layer here where we've got all the resin when, the, when it's dipping into the resin. Um, and when it pulls up, the air will flow through the hole in the shoe and we won't get this cupping. So what we can do is... I'm just going to, we'll set up some holes in a second, but with the hollowing, I'm just going to go Control Z and undo that hollowing. Press hollow again. And we can also add a little simple um, ladder structure. So in here, the filling structure is 10 mil and the support radius is one. So if I go confirm, it gives me one millimeter radius structures, 10 mil spaced apart, and it will give me a diamond lattice running up through the middle of my model. So we can see here in orange now the diamond lattice, one millimeter supports, 10 millimeter spacing. And these supports help sh give structure to our hollow, hollow model. So this is a, you know, these are like beam beams. And if you look at a bridge, you know, a bridge has beams on it and the beams give the structural integrity to the bridge. So this helps to give our model uh, structural integrity. And if I run this up here, you can see the beams running inside the model like that. And you'll note on one leg, I've got airflow nearly all the way through, but not. And the airflow starts here. And then on the next leg, the airflow starts there. So two millimeter wall thickness may not be great because I want to put my hole in here. I don't really want to put a hole in the back of the leg. I could do it. And then I just fill it with a bit of um, bog and yeah, that's fine. We can also do a couple of things with the holes and actually plug them back in and super glue them in place. And I'll show you what I mean. So what we're going to do is just push this up a little bit more to there. And I can start to see where my air void comes in. Okay, so with the holes, what I'm going to do is I want an inward hole. I want the 2 mil outer radius is 2.5. 2 mil long, outer radius 2.5, inner radius is 2. Keep the hole pin, lets me print the pin and put it back into the model. So let's just orientate our view. Let's see how big this pin is. The pin pin's quite large actually in that leg. So let's change the outer radius to 2 and the inner radius to 1.5. And let's just press that there. And there's a preview and we can see the plug coming in to our model. And then we also need to put another one here, like that. And then if I go, conf I can actually put a gap in the pin. So here I might go point uh two gap and go confirm now what it's doing is perforating the model and it's got a 0.2 mil gap in the plugs and it also has given me three files here in my model list so what i can do is now that i've hollowed and i put my holes in what I want to do is I want to arrange all of these parts out. So in order to arrange them, uh, I think I just press A. No, not on this one. To arrange it, I can grab it and I can go, I think it's Control M for move. And I can move. I can move, hey, hey, hey. Ah, it's mirror. Control M is mirror. So I want to move this. Let's drag it out 
and put it over here. Let's get this one. Let's just drag it out, put it over here. Okay. And then I will go on plate, apply to that one. Hey, what's it doing? And <clears throat> I can do the same for this one. And what I will do is kill that. And I'm actually going to rotate it. So let's just go to rotate. And let's just rotate the ball around. And let's click on that one. And let's just rotate the ball around. Okay, so then I've got these two out here. Like that. And this one looks like it should be orientated just a little bit higher. Okay, so now we've got uh, holes in the back to let the air in. We've got the plugs to put back in here. And we've got keying in that, so it helps us locate that. And then we want to effectively just close that, select all three, go to support. And here, the support is automatically detected with the satellite, which is great. Um, we've got our critical angle here, just like in Bamboo. We can adjust that later on. And we can go generate automatic support. And now it's going to generate the supports for the model. And if I move this up, we can see the supports for the model as shown. and we can analyze that maybe we might want another support here so what we can do is we can manually add some supports we might want another support here as well so we can go manually edit and i can click here i can click here and i can go apply and then what you'll notice is it's added in another support there. Here it's saying it doesn't need it. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Let's drag that into there. Let's go apply. Still saying it doesn't need it. I reckon that is going to mess up. But let's have a look at this. I think we need to have another support there. And then definitely in underneath here, we need a few more supports. We probably need some supports inside this hole as well, like that. Even though it's fairly vertical. I might put a support there, support there, go apply. We'll see it adding these supports. Definitely think we need one there. I'll put another one there another one there go apply that's building a few more supports in I definitely think I could add one here here and here and the reason that we're doing this is that just to add more support these supports are what anchor the model and take all of that peeling force and the suction force um, and bond our model to the platen. okay so now that we've got that, we can click here and go back. We've got our model, we've got our plugs. Um, and then what we can do is we can come over here and click on slice. And now what it's going to do is it's going to slice the part. And it will give us a preview here of what the um, LCD screen is going to let light coming through. And that's what our UV light will come through. So you can see here the cross section as we move down. And we can see the cross section of our model. And this is the UV light. And that's the LCD screens letting the light through. And as we come down, we can see all of the supports. And if we're happy with that, what we can do is we can save the slice file. 
And we, at the moment, um, this version doesn't allow for Wi-Fi connection, but it will in future updates for the um, printer. But I'm just going to save it onto a USB and then take it out to the printer and print it. So if I go confirm, it'll export my slice file and we can send it out to the resin printer with uh, 50 micron and off it'll go.